Stress is inevitable, but the way clients experience stress can vary in intensity. While something as small as a scheduling mix-up might cause a slight twinge of stress for some people, for others it could make the rest of the day feel completely out of control. It can be difficult to predict what a client can handle and what might trigger a reactive spiral. But why? Is there something about the way the brain is wired that can sometimes make stressful situations feel even worse? According to Dr. Rick Hansen, the brain is constantly working to meet our three core needs of safety, satisfaction, and connection. And here, he explains one reason why we feel stress when these needs aren't being met. Uh, as animals evolved, uh, including human beings today, the brain developed essentially two ways of going about meeting our three core needs for safety, satisfaction, and connection as overarching umbrella terms. On the one hand, when there's a basic felt sense of those needs being met in one's core, in other words, a basic sense of safety and satisfaction and connection, the brain defaults to its resting state, an equilibrium state, a sustainable homeostatic condition in which the brain directs the body to repair itself and refuel itself and recover from bursts of stress, and in terms of avoiding, approaching, and attaching, in three broad terms, the mind is colored with a, with a sense of peace, contentment, and love. Peace in terms of the safety system, contentment in terms of the satisfaction system, and love in terms of the connection system. Okay, that's the good news. I call that, the, that's the responsive mode of the brain, a term that I and others have used, and I think of it as the green zone. Okay. On the other hand, Mother Nature has endowed us with another setting, you can think of it this way, in the brain, which is where we go when uh, we experience in our core that one or more of our fundamental needs is not met for safety, satisfaction, and connection. Then the brain fires up into its fight or flight uh, stress response mode, or it goes into an intense freeze mode uh, you know, of immobilization. That's the red zone. Um, in that red zone, which is not meant to be sustainable at all, it's a brief burst. Uh, in the red zone, um, the body burns resources faster than it takes them in. Uh, bodily systems are really disturbed. Uh, there's a fundamental sense of deficit and disturbance. And long-term building projects like strengthening the immune system are put on hold. And in terms of avoiding, approaching, and attaching, in three broad terms, the mind is colored with a sense of fear, frustration, and heartache. There's a technical term, you know what I think, of allostatic load. The idea that repeated red zone experiences uh, gradually accumulate a burden on physical health as well as mental health, and certainly just everyday well-being. And to, again, bring it down to earth, we all know basically what it feels like to be mildly peaceful, contented, and loved and loving. It's kind of a basic state of global well-being. And we all know what it feels like to be fearful, frustrated, or to have that ache in our heart. And, you know, we're tough critters. We can handle brief, uh, occasional bursts of red zone stress. But it should not become a way of life. But unfortunately, I think mild to moderate red zone stress, let's call it the pink zone, all right? Uh, you know, is really not good for us. Dr. Hansen's red zone, green zone analogy is useful for helping clients really see how high stress levels can affect the brain. A deeper understanding of how the brain is wired equips people to see what needs to happen so they can slow down reactivity and deal with stress more productively. And now we'd like to hear from you. What are some of the strategies you use to control stress? Please share your experience in the comments.